Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Ray, and today we're going to be playing the Tier 10 Freemium American Carrier, the FDR. So this carrier was requested a few times in my recent post and on Discord, so this is why I decided to pick this type of carrier. It's more slower paced than the usual that everyone does prefer, but honestly I think that this carrier is very comfortable to play. She also has one of the better the better camos in the game in my opinion it's a flying fish the other one is more representative of a uh, like a native camo this is the build that i'll be running if you want to change this to speed mod you can it's totally up to you definitely don't want to be increasing your torpedo speed on the fdr though because your arming distance will get longer and this is the commander skills that i'll be using pretty much going to be um, running this on most of my FPD, uh, fdr games if you guys haven't watched the stream already and if you want a more universal carrier build for the American line, you can run this on Midway, Saipan, and FDR. Uh, Saipan and FDR are special ships and premium ships, so you can rotate these commanders for free. Alright, and we're off. So basically with the game plan with FDR, because you can't really solo carry as this carrier due to the very long um, inner intervals between strikes, it's 25 seconds, and also the slow planes, you can't really do much on your own. It's just pretty much playing more as a supportive role instead of a hard carry like the other tier 10 carriers that everyone knows. Matchmaker wise though, triple NC, we are top tier so this is pretty good for us. Um, Petro, the Golden Lou, uh, those two of the ships we have to be wary of because of their DFAA and high flak potential. Um, I think we should be okay though, but as I said, more of a support role. We really want to be spotting, really want to be uh, helping out our teammates. Um, whichever side can focus down a specific ship uh, quickly, and also uh, which side has least amount of um, flak or also known as those black clouds that spawn off of specific ships when they fire their AA guns. So not much to do here, we're just spotting around. We're going to be trying to just drop this destroyer here. He does have his anti-air on so we can drop this pretty easily. Here's a little showcase of the bombs. Dispersion is not the greatest and you do draw, um, the bombs themselves do drop at a very high altitude so the time it takes to reach the target is very long. You can see that our timer on the right gauge there is our timer when we can strike again. This is 25 seconds, so it's uh, it's pretty painful to most players. They, that's why they don't really like this type of carrier, um, especially because you know when you do have someone rushing you, can't really do much about it. So. We found the triple NC spawn, they're all over here. One of them is going over to the uh, D cap. So we're going to be focusing down the D side. It is going to be the side that has most of our allied ships. So when we do spot a target, we can go ahead and actually uh, deal with that specific target. <laughs> In this case, it's going to be the tier 8 split. It does have a smoke and it has a radar. So it is a bit of a threat to our destroyer. but. I don't feel like it'll be much of a threat if we do have everyone looking at this destroyer. Here we go. We ping it. And we're gonna go ahead and zoom straight into it. Our trumps can be opening up as well. Splits can be forced to smoke here. And the submarine is taken care of. That's pretty good. Give a good lead. See if our bombs connect. And two does. There we go. Now he's gonna be smoking up because he doesn't want to take too much damage. Drop a fighter here so we keep spotting these ships, especially the split, because he is set on fire so his air consumed is um, bloomed a bit. Go ahead and reposition our carrier. And then pretty much we're just going to be trying to look for an opening. Not much to really do other than that. We can go ahead and strike the NC or we can go back and strike the split. And I think we're going to strike the split because he's leaving the smoke screen. Oh no, he was actually still in the smoke. You're right there. Take a gamble on this drop. And we hit him once, so that, that's pretty nice. So he's really low. Let's go ahead and maneuver our ship just a bit. So now, 
the other thing you want to be looking for because is uh this carrier doesn't really have high of a damage uh, carry potential what you want to do is look for floods and fires so this nc is going to be turning away so we can go ahead and zoom towards her try to get this strike off with our bombs the lead time on these bombs might be a bit of a issue to some players but you just gotta practice there's our bombs we drop them hoping that our bombs connect seven bombs and one fire you see that big chunk of damage our bombs do pin the armor of the nc pretty much everywhere so we don't really have to worry about where our bombs land other than the turrets he did dcp that so what we can actually do seems like there's a destroyer on the flank so we're going to turn our ship around the perfect thing about fdr is when you do drop a ship and they do get set on fire or a flood because of the 25 second downtime you have in between strikes uh, it'll be the perfect amount of time uh, for you to um, basically abuse their DCP that's on cooldown. So you don't have to worry whether or not their DCP is still active. Let's go ahead and strike this NC. One thing that FDR is known for is the ability to turn her squadron during the strike to give you the best uh, angle on it. That looks pretty good. Double fire and a five pins. Let's go ahead and find this destroyer or that's on the flank here. It's a Yu Yang. Let's see what we can do. Our planes are not spotted. We're looking at the mini map. Now they're spotted. So let's go ahead and fly over there in that direction. That's like a pretty good way to find out um, where the DD is located at. We see the DD there. He's probably going to accelerate forward, right? He's not going to just sit there. Let's go ahead and drop ahead of him. And the FDR does drop 8 torpedoes. And does have that, that same amount of down, the downtime of 20 some seconds. None of our torps connect unfortunately, but that's okay. Oh, there he is again. Now he's stuck in the Hindenburg radar, so pretty much you just hover here. We see where the uh, Yu Ying is going to go. He's probably going to turn towards the border, I'm assuming, so let's start our run this way. No, and it does look like he is going to be just going to the left. No, he's going to be turning now, I, I feel. Hindenburg has to go towards him, but it's okay. We can just predict his next move. Probably going to turn towards the border. That's what, honestly, I would do as a destroyer to get away from these guys. Because Hindenburg does exist. Yep, there's our Torps. One, two, and three. And he is dead. Nice. We can load up our bombs. Because there is someone running it down mid. Perfect angle for us, just the bow in Schlieffen. Now that's an issue, there's fighters. So one good thing about the FDR, uh, one of the very notable strengths that she has is her squadron HP. Specifically, each plane HP. It's roughly around 4,000 and all together, uh, all together, you can come up to like 55,000, 56,000. You can see on our HP bar right there, 56,000 on these bombers. Pretty insane, so you can give up um, you can just run through flak in many cases. Usually you don't because your planes are still very valuable. You have a large uh, reserve size, but a very long regeneration timer. It's kind of, if you guys know how Saipan plays, generally this is how um, it feels pretty much. Just a little bit longer. Here we go again with the Schlieffen. Slow down here and then turn. He does slide into that, I'm pretty sure. You have five hits, so there we go. FDR drop another fighter, so we're gonna zoom out of there, out of that circle, and we are okay. Nice. Let's go ahead and go after the NC now, so we don't wanna be taking too much damage here. Hopefully, we don't die to that Petro. That Schlieffen needs to die, though, like immediately. I might just fly through and get this damage off because it's getting a little bit too close for me. Maybe that's going to be the play. It's a little worrying to see that Schlieffen is able to push through like that. Mm, hopefully he's able to die before Pe Petro or Schlieffen is able to chunk us down. So we're going to go ahead and just abuse this NC just a little bit. Poor tier 8s suffering against M uh, FDR. Not much that they can really do. If the carrier knows how to dodge the flak, there's like literally nothing that the battleship can really do other than maneuver. 
So we're dropping this here. He does turn. And five connects with a fire. If he DCPs this, he might not DCP. But uh, then again, we don't want to... We don't want to assume. So he probably maybe still has DCP active. We have to uh, we have to wait. We should totally help out with this Petro after. We just want this strike off though, because we can we have the potential to kill the NC with this drop. The DCP is down, especially. Approaching target. Let's say he DCP this. All eight bombs, looks like seven bombs, five bombs again, and one fire, and that is a perma actually. Nice. So, start our torpedo bombers. Let's go ahead and showcase these torpedoes. So, these torpedo bombers are very special. Um, you guys know how the Aquila or the Royal Navy carriers torpedo bombers operates. You can actually turn these with very little to no. Um, down to no uh, was a reticle exp uh, expanding. So let me go ahead and showcase it here. And because these planes are so slow, you can actually turn these pretty much more than a 180 degree turn, which is absurd. Let's go ahead and showcase this here. Petro is bowing. He's slowly reversing. Dodge the first flat clouds and start our attack run. So we're going to take a look at the F, uh, the Petro on our screen. We're going to take a look at the minimap as well, trying to get the angling correct. And then we're going to hard turn it. Now he's basically just going to eat all of these. He's going to slowly creep forward. He eats all eight of these. But this is almost guaranteed a uh, flood. He's going to reverse, actually. That's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a flood. So if is that a perma flood? It is not. We ping our team that, let them know. Next target is going to be the Golden Lion because from this angle, we can't really drop um, the Petro. He's way too close. Keep sailing northward so we can get as close, but without threatening to be uh, in, in their concealment. Start the attack run now, and then we're going to drop the Golden Lion. We would love to drop the Petro here, but unfortunately, he's way too close to the island, so I'm going to just drop the uh, Golden Lion. Actually, I think we're going to have to drop the Poison. No, we should be okay. Golden Lion's gonna move forward along with the poison, so go ahead and just drop him there. Just launch the torps, get them going. We can go ahead and use our bombs as well. It's so pretty much the couldn't really showcase it too well this game, but just showcasing like the potential what FDR can do. As long as you're supporting your team, starting floods and fires and Keeping track of DCP usages and calling them out to your team is going to be very important. You can pretty much, in a way, you can carry your team to victory. Like, not by directly dealing damage, but just making sure that your team is able to capitalize on um, what needs to be done. There we go. Kind of aimed that a little bit off to the right side there, but it should be good. Yeah. Seven hits, two fires, and he's perma burning now because he did DCP before. I saw him on fire earlier. He put it out. Now I'm gonna try to dodge the flag as best as possible. This is why we take the anti flag skill, the four pointer, because you will eat flag a lot of times. Here we go. And the game is about to end, so that's gonna be GG. See if we can get this strike off. Nope. North Carolina goes down and the game ends before we can get this drop off. Unfortunate, but a win is a win. Alright, so we're able to get 158,000 damage, 12 torp hits, 42 bombs, 7 fires, and 2 floods. Team score wise, we reached top of the board. We helped out with that Yu Yang, that Yu Yang going there. You pretty much have to predict where they're gonna turn. And then you can turn your torpedo bombers accordingly, trying to maneuver around. Um, sometimes it helps to hit the brakes because slower the planes generally means um, better the turning. Same thing goes with torpedo the homing torpedoes on submarines. So 
pretty much just gotta play around with it a little bit, get used to it. And this is why we also take uh, reducing the arming speed of the torpedoes and we don't take the torpedo speed because that will ruin the, uh, the uh, arming distance. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about FDR specifically, feel free to comment down and I'll go down the list of uh, trying to complete all the carriers that you guys did request in the other post. If you guys do want to request more, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.